So when compared to ICAS, I want mm. you to be very truthful. Yeah. When compared to ICAS, how does ACA fare? Is it a lesser qualification? Because I know there is a preconception around that. Yeah. Uh, or are these qualifications equal? So let's just talk at first at a global, global, global uh, level. And then maybe we can then narrow it down to Zim. But on a global level, Mm-hmm. Do you feel how does it compare a person who is ICAS and a person who is ACA? Okay, I'll be very objective and honest. Oh, hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. On this channel, as you know, we talk about careers, especially accounting careers, because that's the field that I'm known about. So uh as you might know my name is mochi faba and today i am joined by a very special guest and um this guest was referred to me by a number of people for me to actually start on which means he's referred and he's revered in the, in the industry so today i am sitting with Ngoni, uh who is the owner of premier business school he is a chartered accountant in england and wales and he is also a holder of a very popular accounting qualification known as ACA. On the part time, when he likes to do his roadrunners, I follow him on Twitter and that's how I know about his roadrunners. <laughs> Goni, thank you so much for agreeing to come and have a conversation with me about ACA of the many hats. We want to talk about ACA today. Thank you so much about uh, for coming through. Thank you so much, Maud. I think it's... Uh... Sorry that it's taken so long for us to eventually meet, but I'm glad that uh, today we're finally here. And uh, I'm also quite happy to be talking to you. I think I've also followed you, uh, your whole journey um, from university up to up to where you are now. And I think you've done so, so, so well. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So, going before we start talking about ARCA, I know I, I gave an introduction about you is there anything you want to add that i might have missed like probably how long you've been working on premier business school and um how long you've been training people towards aka uh thank you Maud. so i founded premier business school in 2012 january 2012 so um we are almost uh, 10 years old now and oh, nice. uh, yes at the time when we started we were saying uh, with my partner that uh, if we get to five years, I think we'd have achieved our dream. So thank God Yay. now we get into 10 years. So we're quite excited. So we've been training um, um, ACCA students for, for nine years, now getting to 10. And it's been a long journey. Uh, we have learned a lot. We have met a lot of friends. Uh, some that have become family. So it's been quite an enjoyable journey. And now we are also teaching students from across Africa uh, who are studying with us. So it's been quite exciting. And we are quite... Um, know happy with where we are now and we hope to continue to grow into the future no that's nice i'm happy for you you are literally living the dream right (laughs) (laughs) no that's fine so i'm going now we're getting into the serious business of arca so we want to talk about what is arca because a lot of people don't have they have questions don't have knowledge about arca and then we're also trying to also go uh i don't know i don't like competing my own life but I know people have a lot of questions when there are options between ACA and ICAS, mm-hmm. uh, becoming an ICAS. So yeah. I also want you to, would ask you to also, you'll see some of the questions. I'll yeah. ask you to sort of pity the qualifications against each other. I know we both will have our own biases, but yeah. I know you will give, you'll be able to give us uh, a very good objective answer. So yeah. the first question that I want to ask you is, at what point can someone start ACA? Like, what are the entry requirements for you to start on your ACA ACCA journey? Who is the ideal candidate? Okay, so with ACCA, you can start uh, from A level. So as long mm-hmm. as you have uh, two A level passes um, and you've done meds or accounting, then you can okay. you can join ACCA. But um, if you don't have A level, you can also still join ACCA. But you start by doing. Um, the lower qualification, which is called the foundations in accountancy. So once you pass the foundations in accountancy, that then becomes your entry qualification onto the ACCA qualification. So in a way, literally anyone can do ACCA. But um, ideally, you you would want uh, somebody who has done a bit of accounting, um, so that um, they understand you know the concepts and stuff like that. But 
Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that if you have not done accounting before, you cannot do ACCA. You can actually be able to do ACCA. We have taught guys who um, have done engineering and they've come and passed ACCA. Okay, Gwani, thank you so much. Aside from the school, you talked about a person passing ACCA from A level. So aside yeah. from the school, what other requirements should a person meet? Are there any other requirements? For ICAS, there is a requirement for you to have experience to be admitted as a member. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to find out, is there any other requirements for you to say, I am a full ACA now, in a, uh, I, I believe you call it an affiliate. Is yeah. there any other requirement aside from the papers that you register for? Okay, so with ACCA, you do the exams, which is a teaching mm -hmm. exam. Mm -hmm. the, when you pass the exams and you've completed your ethics module, you then become mm -hmm. an affiliate. So an affiliate is somebody who has finished the exams but he has not yet the experience. So okay. yes, so ACC then requires you to to save three years experience in a relevant accounting role. So um, unlike, for example, ICAS, ICAS have, um, requires somebody to do the articles for you to become a mm -hmm. member. Mm -hmm. With ACCA, you can either do articles or you can you can save your hours um, in a corporate world. So they've got that open policy where you can go and work for a company XYZ Limited. As long as you're in a, an accounting role, they still consider that experience as valid. Um, but the process that ACCA then does is that when you're now applying to be admitted to be a member, mm -hmm. there should be another member who is in good standing who can vouch for you to say, the experience that you are claiming indeed is what you were actually doing. And oh, yes, that's and, interesting. Yes, and this member who signs uh, for you does not necessarily have to be an ACC member. It can be even an ICAS member, as long as they are a member of an IFAC recognized accounting body, they can be able to sign off your hours as well. Um, so it has to be either your line manager or your um, supervisor at the organization or your FD, as long as they uh, know what exactly you're doing and uh, whether what you are doing is in line with what you are reporting to have done, they can sign off for you. Oh, that's very interesting because I never knew that there is a difference between a member and an affiliate. I'm also learning. So okay. so that's very, that's, that's very interesting. So it's mm -hmm. sort of so in a way, oh, these accounting qualifications are almost the same because yeah. um, the, the process that you're talking about where another person, a member, uh, vouches for you, ICAS does this also at the end. So it's very interesting that um, both have school and then they have a practical experience requirement before they can call you a member. So yeah. it's very interesting. So when compared to ICAS, I want you to be very truthful. Yeah. When compared to ICAS, how does ACA fare? Is it a lesser qualification? Because I know there is a preconception around that. Yeah. Uh, or are these qualifications equal? So let's just talk at first at a global, global, global uh, level. And then maybe we can then narrow it down to Zim. But on a global level, Mm -hmm. Do you feel, how does it compare a person with ICAS and a person who has ACA? Okay, I'll be very objective and honest. Um, ACCA is bigger in terms of numbers worldwide. I think in terms of number of students and number of members, if you check the statistics, ACCA is the highest numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, understandably so, because if you look at ICAS, for example, it's a local qualification for Zimbabwe. And mm -hmm. Zimbabwe can never have as many numbers as the counties that are there globally who are doing ACCA. True, true, true. Um, but in terms of uh, the qualifications themselves, right? Let's say if you've got mm -hmm. two candidates, one who has done ACCA and one who has done ICAS. Mm -hmm. Globally, if, for example, like you said, I'm, I'm also CA England and Wales. And mm -hmm. in the UK, if one has done ACCA and somebody else has done ICAW, mm -hmm. the two candidates are viewed the same. They are treated the same. But we, we, we have a local problem in Zimbabwe. Okay, yes, please. Now, as far as I'm concerned, I, I rate the two qualifications equally the same, ICAS and ACCA. Okay. Yes, I, I, I pretty much rate them the same. Uh, in as much as the exams may be different here and there, um, but in terms of the, the knowledge that they impact to me as an accountant or to my students, 
it's equally the same because if you're doing IFRS 15, it's IFRS 15. If you're doing PPE, it's PPE. So yeah. the knowledge that the students do have, for me, as far as, far as I'm concerned, the best is the same. But okay. I think the problem that we've got in this country is that compared to other countries, if you go to Botswana, for example, uh, an ACCA member is automatically a BICA member. You don't have to write any other exams if you're an ACCA member in Botswana. Oh, interesting. Yes. But for Zimbabwe and South Africa, it's totally different. In South Africa, if you are uh, an ACCA, you are not going to be accepted as a, as a CA unless if you do the uh, CA qualification. Same mm -hmm. applies in Zimbabwe. If I'm an ACCA and um, I want to do the ICAS qualification, ICAS will not even give me a single exemption. I have to start from CTA level one. Okay. Which for me is, is an unfortunate development because um, I don't think that um, as an ACCA, there's something new that I'm going to learn when I go and start doing CTA from, from level one, for example. Okay. Because I would have done everything that's in there. So it is a perception in this market which is really unfortunate for the qualification. Because, and also it's, it's even gone on to the industry where if you go to a company where the FD is an ICAS member, for example, mm -hmm. they will not want to recruit an ACCA. They want mm -hmm. to recruit a fellow ICAS. If you go to a company where the FD is an ACCA, they equally do the same thing. They also want to employ another fellow ACCA. And for me, I think this is really an unnecessary rivalry between the two qualifications. Oh, yeah. Okay. If you, if you go to the audit firms, if you go to the audit firms, if the partner is ICAS, naturally they want to take students who are doing ICAS. I've heard of students who, when they go to the audit firms, they want to do ACCA, but the, the audit firm will insist that you must do ICAS, for example. Or they, they have to they dictate sometimes the, the, the qualification that you have to do as a trainee, which for me is really unfortunate. And I can't wait for the day that, um, you know, this whole rivalry comes to an end and we just see each other as professionals. Because look, if you're coming from university, you have an accounting degree. You go to ICAS, somebody goes and does ACCA. Mm -hmm. These are people who, in terms of skills, don't have much in terms of skills, um, work skills. Okay, so as far as I'm concerned, the qualification is more like um, a landing point for somebody who is coming from school to get into the accounting profession. From, so, there, from there, it's no longer about the qualification, it's now about the individual, how they perform in the workplace, their skills, how they deliver, their interpersonal skills, their passion about their job, and how they interact with other people in the workplace. It's, it's no longer now about the qualification. Oh, interesting, interesting, interesting that you say that because I've I've noticed that um also in the audit firms they also tend to 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 recruit people in as much as they recruit people who have CTA and ITC which has been the um, which is board one which has been the the norm these days where they don't take straight from degree they are now taken from CTA and ITC I've also noted that they are also recruiting people who have ACA which is yeah. also why it's why it's also now on my radar like okay so this is a very serious qualification other than the perceptions that I had of it. And I think I'll, I'll get into it in a moment about the perceptions. Uh, but uh, I've also noticed that, uh, which is very true to what you're saying, th that when you then, when people then look for jobs out of the country, let's say most of the people that are living, I will be very honest, they're going into audit jobs. And when you're going into an audit job and you have ICAS and you have ACA, they treat you like you are an accountant. So I do get what you're saying, exactly. that you are an accountant, and that's the bottom line. So, mm -hmm. but, but then let's say for someone who is not interested in uh, opportunities outside, let's say opportunities in, in, in audit out of the country, where you're almost rated the same, mm -hmm. if you're full ARCA and if you're full ARCA, you're almost rated the same, you're just going into the assistant manager or audit senior roles out there. Let's say you want to stay in Zim. I know that for me as an exit opportunity, there are opportunities that come to me because I'm, look, I'm an ICAZ that are coming to me. Is a person who finishes ACA and is interested in working in the, um, in the industry here in Zim, and he has the same experience as you have said that the profession is just a lending, uh, lending spot and your experience then sort of then determines the way you go. Let's say someone has ACA and they go into the audit firm and still do their three years of audit experience, <clears throat> do you reckon they will be exposed to the same opportunities locally? 
or the market what is the market perception or the market to say we want the ICAs first or what has been the dynamic that you have noticed after having trained so many ACA, ACA uh, professionals okay so I think the, the the biggest dilemma that we have is that when you see some of the adverts that are flown around in the newspapers and stuff like that they will advertise um, a, a job and they say you must be a chartered accountant or you must be a CA and I say to myself, so what do they mean? What is a CA to them? Is a CA to them somebody who has done ICAS? Or is a CA to them somebody who has done ACCA? Or is a CA to them somebody who has done ICAW? What is a CA? Because I think to a certain extent, people don't also quite understand to say, so um, if somebody has got the, the, the letters CAZ after their name, and somebody has got ACCA letters after their name, what is the interpretation? What does that mean? But as far as I'm concerned, these two are both qualified chartered accountants, but they have just qualified with two different balls. So uh, because you have done ICAS, your letters will be CAZ. Because somebody has done ACCA, their letters will be ACCA. But in terms of them being qualified chartered accountants, they both are qualified chartered accountants, but with two different boards. But sometimes you see adverts that say you must be a chartered accountant. But which one? Yeah. Which one? Yeah. Some then specify that you must be a CAZ. But it doesn't necessarily mean that if a job says CAZ or if they say ACCA, then that person is better than in, if, if a job says you must be ACCA, then that person is better than a CAZ qualified person or vice versa. But I think it, it is an industrial problem that we have in this country about perceptions of the two qualifications, really. Um, so like I said, it, 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 it then goes down to the, to the candidate themselves to be able to perform when they get the job. But uh, they are not going to perform better because they are CAZ or the <laughs> ACA. <laughs> On that one, I stand to be corrected. I stand to be corrected. But, uh, uh, no, because, I, uh... because when you look at it, um, you have been in the audit firm. I've been in the audit firm. We've gone through the same training, and yeah, yes. um, we've equally acquired the same skills. And even when you look at um, audit trainees that have done the same qualification of um, CAZ, for example, they they don't perform mm -hmm. the same. You've got some that are very sharp that do better work than the others, uh, but they've also done the same qualification. Equally, when you look at those that have done ACCA, it's the same thing. So it, it baffles my mind when the recruiters specifically say I want the CAZ or I want an ACC. That's very, very interesting that you mentioned. And I do, I do agree with you. I do agree with you that um, I think which maybe bring me to the next story, maybe the, the next question I meant. Um, I do agree with you that uh, if at some point your degree, your qualification is going to not matter and your experience and your skills are going to matter. So maybe if you, you decide to go on the ACA route, you can actually then try to get as much experience as the person who is a CAZ. If you want to be exposed to the same ex opportunities, for example, go to the audit firm, get the audit experience, and then you'll be able to just complete the same because literally you can do the same things. Mm -hmm. So that, um, that brings me to my other question. This one is very interesting. Okay. You know, we human beings, the idea of social media, we work with inspiration. I'm going to be very honest. We work with inspiration. The reason why I started to want to be a CA is because I saw a CA who set me down. I saw their life. I was like, hmm, I want this life. <laughs> you know, I want to also be able to be, have access to the things they do, to have a house like they do, a car that they do. Mm -hmm. How come I don't know as much ACA success stories? Everyone I have seen who is in ICAS, mm -hmm. you can literally plot, plot that they qualified at this point. Mm -hmm. A year after, they bought their car, they bought, they're working on their savings and everything. Um, what happens with ACA? How come? I don't know. Granted, there are very much business leaders who are ACA qualified. I know the CEO of Stuart Bank, the recently appointed is an ACA. Mm -hmm. Yes, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, how come they are outliers? Because I think with people, the other thing is people want a career that the moment you qualify to be ICAS, whether you're too exceptional or you're not, we know your life changes. Mm -hmm. How come we don't know so much of 
this person they did at the moment they finished they got this big job is it that people actually don't finish to become members oh, oh, oh what happens what okay. happens can you explain that bit okay so um maybe because i'm involved in the acca was quite a lot but i know so yes. many success stories of uh um of uh, of acca members that have done so well i could give you um, a few examples for example the auditor general of zimbabwe is an acca Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Her, her deputy is an ACCA. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and and this is the audit of the country. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is an ACCA, right? I I know of many people. I know um, finance directors of um, um, you know Zimbabwe listed Zimbabwe stock exchange listed companies who are ACCA. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know whether it would be appropriate to mention them by name, but I know MD. Yeah. I know MDs who who have you you mentioned the CEO of uh, Stuart Bank. Stuart Bank, yes. Yes, um, the MD of BOC Gases was ACCA. Um, mm -hmm. I can go on and on, but I, I think it's probably about uh, whether these people are in the public domain or not, or you know whether these success stories are published or not. But I know so many people who are ACCA qualified who have done exceptionally well in their careers. But at the same time, also one one thing you need to appreciate also is that when the accounting profession evolved. Mm -hmm. CAZ was in the country first before ACCA came. Okay. And as a result, the people that qualified in the first years, for example, soon after independence, were all doing CAZ. And as a result, you find that even in the industry, okay, um, these people then took up the senior roles and the senior positions first before we had people that qualified with ACCA. Okay. Because, yes, because ACCA then sort of came at a later stage after mm -hmm. um, ICAS had already been there. Mm -hmm. So, but for me, I know so many success stories. I know um, so many people that have qualified with ICAS or with ACCA who are doing exceptionally well. But I think one thing that we also need to appreciate is that is the game of numbers. Mm -hmm. um, for example, in, in, in Zimbabwe, ACCA is almost 10,000 registered students who are doing ACCA. Mm -hmm. So there's so many of the students out there and when they qualify, how big is our job market? And also you will find that for for example for for people who are doing caz because of the requirement of most of them now do their articles with audit firms and the moment they they, they finish their three years with the audit firms they can easily leave the country to go and be an auditor overseas like in the islands and stuff like that equally for somebody who has done acca they can also leave the audit firm and go overseas and also do the same thing but here is the problem okay the problem is that because of the numbers that ACCA draws, like I've said to you, 10,000 students. Mm. The audit firms in this country don't have the capacity to recruit all They don't. They don't. They Meaning don't. That. That's very true. Meaning that of the students that are qualifying with ACCA, only a handful are able to make it to the audit firms to do their articles. The yeah. bulk can't be in the audit firms. So it means all those who can't get into the audit firms have got to do their experience in the industry. So if you go to uh, Ngoni Private Limited and do your three years there, right? It's very difficult for you, for example, if you want to go and join uh, Ernest & Young in Gainesville and say, I've sure. done my three years at Ngoni Private Limited. Sure. But if you're coming from an audit firm, then it is easier for you to even do an intra-company transfer and go and work in Gainesville. So I think those are just the dynamics of uh, of the two qualifications. I, I don't quite know how many numbers um, ICAS do have in terms of students, um, but all I know is ACC does ten thousand plus every year. That's the sort of number of students they've got, and these can get into the audit firm. So they end up um, just going generally into the industry and work. But at the same time, such students when they become members, it's so easy for them to go to Canada, to go to New Zealand, to go to Australia and work there because in those countries ACCA and the local qualifications they are rated equally the same so many of those also leave the country the moment they qualify and be members and go and work out there but some of them won't necessarily be going into audit firms but they'll be going into the industry so success stories i know so many people i can spend the whole day listing people uh, that are you know that have got good jobs that have done ACCA yeah. No, that's um, th that's very very insightful, and I do I do I do agree with you. I, I give it to you. I probably know more CAZ because I hang around circles with CAZ, so yeah. it would be the same. Probably, if I would ask you for a CAZ, you would struggle <laughs> to, to find one as well. <laughs> you know, for, for, me, 
for me, fortunately, <laughs> I, 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 look, I've, I've, like I've said, I treat mm -hmm. uh, ACCA and the CAZ the same. I hang around with a lot of CAZ people. Oh, interesting. Yes, I know many CAZ uh, people who are partners in audit firms um, that I talk to on a personal level that I'm friends with because I've, I've, I've said to myself, I don't need this rivalry. You know, I don't want to yeah, miss. Yeah. I don't want to miss an opportunity because if the opportunity is coming through a CAZ. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I I do hear you. I do hear you. And and, and I, I I quite I quite agree on um on the issue that uh, you have raised, which brings us maybe back to the point you raised earlier on when you were saying when we're looking at a global level and then when we come back to a zim level we kind of see sort of a little diversion from the global level because as you said uh with audit firms there's only so much now a number of people that they can take oh, first thing is we have only so much audit firms we don't have many yeah. and then they themselves they can only take so much that they can foster in and train and it's unfortunate that they then um tend to be the people uh, more inclined around the caz than the than the arca because even if you if you do the numbers you see that mismatch is there so i do agree with you and i do i do get your point um and i don't know if this question is still need to ask it but i'll just ask it since i wrote it but i think i know the answer to this okay. if you're to go back in life yeah. would you still do arca Yes, I would still do ACCA because <laughs> I knew the <laughs> Because I, I, I think ACCA has done so much in my life. It has transformed my life. Um, I grew up in the rural areas. Only came to the city um, when I was quite old in you know high school, and um, but ACCA sort of opened the world for me. Um, I've, I've I've gone to teach ACCA. Um, you know, all over the world. I've gone to teach uh, in different countries, Zambia, uh, South Africa, I've been to Mauritius, I've been to different countries teaching ACCA. I've presented, you know, at the Global uh, Learning Provider Conference for ACCA. Mm -hmm. and, and that experience, I can never take it away from me. I've presented it um, at the Africa Learning Provider, you know, conference in, in different countries every year. And I've been to so many places with ACCA. So I would not um, choose any other but ACC, but not because ICARS can't give me the same opportunity. No, um, I would still choose ACC because I think I, I like it. I like the global appeal that it's got and I like what it's done. But I think also, you know, the other thing that uh, I would want to say is that sometimes also it's lack of uh, guidance and uh, career guidance at a young age. Like you see, you say that somebody set you down who was a CA and they drew that person out of you. Equally, if if I had sat down with you after your 14 points at, uh, at A-level, uh, <laughs> I, I would have told you to say, Maud, stop going to university, come and do ACCA. And yeah. probably, probably your opinion today could have been different. Exactly, exactly. But, it all comes, it, it, it is very important. The career guidance part you mentioned is very, very important. Yes. But you can but go I, ahead. I want to just share something with you that probably either you know or you may not know. Mm -hmm. that um, with ACCA, for example, if somebody is coming out of um, high school with their 14 points or 10 points or whatever, and instead of going to university, they, they, they not go to university and they come and do ACCA straight from A level. The only plus thing which I would say is an addition is that ACCA has partnered with Oxford Brooks University. Mm -hmm. So that when you finish your first nine modules, which you can do in 18 months, you do a dissertation you submit it to Oxford Brooks University. If you pass, you are given mm -hmm. an honours degree, a BSc honours in applied accounting. Mm -hmm. So it means you are earning two qualifications in one go without necessarily doubling your effort. So it means a student who comes from A level into ACCA can can have the advanced diploma in ACCA, which is the one you get in nine uh, after doing nine modules, and you get your degree within two years. Compared to somebody who has gone to university for four years. And after university, they still need to come back and do either ICAS or ACCA step. So for me, if, if somebody comes to me and say, I need to make a decision between um, ICAS and ACCA, this is the information I'll give them to say, look, you can go to university, do four years. After your four years, you can come back and still have to make a decision to say, should I go and do ICAS or should I go and do ACCA? But whereas by the time you finish your four years at university, your, your, your study buddy or your colleague who you're within A level, 
who went straight into ACCA would have gotten a degree and would have finished their ACCA within maybe three years. Interesting. Interesting it that is, you bring that up. Yes. For me, this is the clear distinction between the two qualifications. But again, once whoever went to university comes back and does either ACCA or ICAS, and that kid who came out of high school and did ACCA, once the two of them finish, for me, they are part. <laughs> interesting that's very that's very interesting you know um i um, I, I remember that when i was uh, when i was at uni uh before uh this chartered accountant set me down when i was at uni and my plan was to do a master's and a phd and become doctor and everything yeah. um i got an offer actually in one of those firms to actually come and start my uh, uh, ICAS because ICAS is that you can come from high school do your degree part-time or you do your hours uh, option. I think I did a video about it. I will link it somewhere in the description of this video. But I actually said no because I had no idea. <laughs> when I look back, I'm like, oh no, I should have. I should have yeah. said yes. But yeah. because I didn't know. So all those things that you're saying that, you know, people don't know that you can actually get your degree faster with ACA instead of the four years and, you know, all those things. Uh, yeah. People don't know. And and thank you very much for, for bringing it up. Um, and, and, and when you were talking about your career, this is going to be my last question. Mm -hmm. So when you're talking about your career and this video, it's kind of very easy to see how your career took the move it's always moved in the way it has because the person that you are you're very convincing you should be a salesperson you're very <laughs> convincing <laughs> and um you also i i would also believe it's also coming with the experience of crying a couple 10 years you know you're very well versed in the things that you talk about now let's let's talk about someone who is average Mm -hmm. who is not as exceptional as you are about what well, I'm thinking I'm thinking the way you talk this is a skill you've got somewhere else and this is, I, I can't expect an average person to talk like you do so let's talk about the average person who is doing ICA I've, I've, I've mentioned to you that a lot of people for ICA is a lot of people qualifying audit firms and then they, most of them they're living even ICA says 50 percent is 50% of OCAs is gone. They are going out of the country. They're going into audit roles. Those that stay, they stay here and they go into, I would say, FM roles around here. Mm -hmm. uh, or maybe senior accountant starting, senior accountant going into FM. Then from FM, they become FDs, maybe COOs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Is this been the same career trajectory for people with ACA? Or from your experience, I'm talking. From, I'm trying to get from your experience. What have you seen? Has this been the same uh, career trajectory, or has there been a difference somehow? I have seen um, um, people who have qualified with ACCA and then mm. go to be uh, some to be accountants, some to be finance managers, and some go rise to group finance manager and to group FD. But um, like I said to you, it's it, for me uh, once you you leave the, for example, the entry row of saying assistant accountant, for example, and you're promoted to be accountant. From that point, personally, I, I think it's no longer about the qualification. Um, it's now about the skill. What, what kind of skill do you have? And also, there's the issue of natural preference by the organization, depending on who is heading the finance role. Um, so some people go on to rise to become uh, uh, seniors or finance managers uh, because literally they are, uh, they are either ACCA or ICAS. But <laughs> I, I'll tell you that um, I've, I've seen, I've interacted with many CAs that complain that uh, they are reporting to an ACCA who doesn't know anything. And equally, I've also seen ACCA that complain that they are, there's an, a, an, an ICAS member who has been brought to whom they are reporting to who also they think doesn't know anything. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, true. Yes. So the, the dynamics in the industry really uh, depends on the preference of the organization to say, here, do we prefer uh, ACCA or do we prefer um, ICAS, for example. I've got one former student who is now a member of ACCA. Mm -hmm. Their organization is, a, is an approved training um, partner for ICAS, right? Mm -hmm. um, and because his, um, his boss is CA, he was told point blank, to say, yes, you've got your ACCA, but if you want promotion here, you've got to do ICAS. Mm. 
And if I tell you he's writing his final board exams this year, but he, he had to do ICAS not because he wanted to do ICAS, but he wanted to do it. He wanted ACC. He had already finished ACC. But for him to, to, to grow and be promoted, it was very clear. The company even said, we'll pay, you for, we'll pay for the fees for your education as long as you're doing ICAS. So it is, it is more than what we see on the surface, just to say ICAS is better than ACC. It's beyond that. In the organizations, there's so much politics that, for me, does not really make any sense. There's no need for us to politicize certain positions to say you must be ACCA to be FDA or to be FM or you must be ICAS here to be FM. For me, it should be down to performance. How much do you perform? Do you deliver what we want? Do you meet the turnaround time? Do you meet the deadlines? If you if you tick those boxes for me, then you're the right candidate. So that's, that's interesting. That's, that's how I take it, honestly. Uh, so this this whole politics of the two qualifications, as far as I'm concerned, is really unfortunate. Um, to have in this profession and really uncalled for. But unfortunately, it is what it is. It is what it is. And then it changes the, um, the Zimbabwe perspective of the qualification, the Zimbabwean perspective, which makes it different from the global perspective of the qualification. Thank you so much, um, Goni, for coming through. I've learned, if there's one thing that I've learned is um, is that the reason why I don't know so many Aka success stories is one, I don't hang out enough in their circles. I'll probably make a visit to your school, maybe. And two, uh, <laughs> and two, I think the other reason is because I have not differentiated between an affiliate and a member in my mind. So in my mind, this was the same thing. So uh -huh. it's, it's, it wouldn't be fair to, uh, to compare an affiliate and a member. Because yeah. an affiliate hasn't had the experience of which we know as when we're back into the working world and the real world, your experience really what is what matters, your skills, what can you deliver, what value do you bring? So it's more than a qualification. It then becomes a story of your skills. So I've, I've learned quite a lot uh, in doing this video. Thank you so much for coming through and for gracing us with your presence and your knowledge. I don't know if there's any words that you want to say before we go. I just want to thank you as well for inviting me to your channel to, to just share my experience with uh, your viewers and your followers. Um, but I think um, um, I'm quite impressed with what you have achieved personally. And I'm thank sure there's so many girls out there that look up to you and also want to be like you. So keep doing good and I wish you nothing but the best. I will make everyone a CAZ good. <laughs> 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 as long as no. I'm happy. Thank you so much. So, um, to everybody watching this video, if you have any follow up questions after this is, I will definitely, uh, you can either reach out to me on my LinkedIn. I'll put both my LinkedIn and Goni's LinkedIn on the description of the video, so that if you have any questions, you can either ask me or you can ask Goni. I'm sure you'll be very happy to assist. He has been receptive to me. I'm sure he will be receptive to you. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Ciao. No, this is very insightful.